you making? Coffee. Sweet. Can you make me some? Yes. Well, <clears throat> today it's really good actually. Yesterday was rough, mm -hmm. way too strong. You know when you like take a sip and you're just like, nope, not that one. Yeah. No, today was good. Today was like a watch here. I'll do this drink. Oh man, that makes me want to read a book. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a book. We got plenty of books around here. Books, 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 books. Oh, baby. Rain, rain, rain. Oh, man, it's a rainy day. <whistles> Not much you can do outside when it rains. It's getting on you guys. Sorry about that. Well, looks like we have some serious rain today. I'm looking over here at the garden. You know, as you guys know who've been following along on the journey, this whole thing is brand new. No till garden. Right underneath this is still grass, but the compost layers are on top with cardboard underneath. And as you can see, these little, little guys are coming up, but they had a rough start. See, they're coming out, they're coming back. A little water droplet. But they're, all these older leaves are dead for sure. That's where the bugs ate them up. Not quite all of them survived, but quite a few did. You can see. Even this little guy, look at that brand new leaf. It's looking happy. All these little guys got big time attacked by some cabbage worms. But you, as you can see, they're starting to come back and the romaine lettuce is coming up, Swiss chard. Everything's starting to come back to life, but really I wanna, I wanna give them a boost of life. I wanna give them as much chance as I can, even though we're kinda late in the fall. You know, there's a few things that we can do and one of those, one of the tricks of the trade is one I want to show you right now. You know what these guys need? They need some TLC, some more TLC. They've got this compost, which it looks like they're loving, but I want to give them a little more. I want to give them some actively aerated compost tea. Oh yeah, fresh branches coming out. Starting to look good. You can see those are the ones that got eaten by the bugs, but the new ones, looking good. Yeah, all right. Let's give these fellers a new dose of TLC. You know what's happening here? This mulch is getting drenched. You can see on the top where it's gotten wet, but man, underneath there, it's starting to really get a nice dose of moisture, which is activating all those microbes. Gonna turn this mulch into green garden goodness. That compost is breaking down more too. You can tell fall is in the air when you start seeing all these leaves everywhere. It's crazy. I mean, I'm talking fall is hitting quick. Folks, this is the key to so much garden goodness. Let me show you what's inside. All right, so we've got this set up here. I made this area compost tea set up back in the day in my college years, which was only like two years ago, but essentially the project hypothesis was to see if aerated compost tea or non-aerated compost tea would have an impact on suppressing the impacts of pythium root rot on, on uh, pea seedlings, like sweet pea seedlings. Pythium really it just attacks the roots or the stem. My hypothesis was that if we added a large amount of beneficial bacteria and fungi and protozoa, then that would populate the surface of the seed to where the pythium could not infiltrate and could not attack that seed because it was surrounded by so many beneficial bacteria, fungi, you know, all kinds of microbes. I would spray it with the aerated compost tea, which is supercharged with all kinds of beneficial bacteria and fungi. And uh, so, yeah, I was trying to see if adding all those beneficial microbes would ward off or protect against the harmful microbes. So let's look in here, this is fun. What do we got here? 
All right, this is just a five gallon bucket. Some one gallon paint strainers. The rest of the setup is just the pump. Okay, folks, I really like to make things simple. You know, there's a lot of tutorials out there that are kind of complicated for air, actively aerated compost tea, but I want to make this simple for y'all so you can get out there, get the materials, and make your own compost tea at your house. These are the materials you need. You're going to need two six inch air stones. They're fairly cheap at any like pet store or Walmart, which usually has them, or just get them off Amazon. One gallon paint strainers. You really just need one. This quarter inch air pipe clear air pipe. Go ahead and get that. A roll of it is good. All you're really going to need is about 10 feet of it. You're going to get these T's. You need two T's. One for this split and one for the other split. And then you're going to need two of the one inch air stones. Okay, as far as pumps go, you really want to have a pump that has at least 0.05 CFM cubic feet per minute uh, capacity per gallon. Now I have a five gallon bucket here, so we're gonna do one that's at least 0.25 CFM. So I have a top fin 3000, which does the trick, and a bucket with a lid on the top of it. You get your hose. I have about three feet of hose for each hose, so that's six feet total, two parts. And you just poke these in here. So you've got the pump, or the pump, and about two to three feet of distance coming through here. One line is going to be your lower bubbles. Go ahead and do the T. Then you'll need about 6 to 12 inches to have some wiggle room. Connect those in. Same thing over here. 6 to 12 inches distance going along. Pop those in there and you are set to jet. Actually, if you want to make this even simpler, you don't even need these two 1 inch air stones. They are helpful, but you don't need them. Really what's going to happen is we're going to have these air stones inside of the netting you want to put put it in like this you know you have you have the compost in here and then you put your one inch air stones in there and then cinch it at the top and that just means there's more bubbles more air right there where all the compost is really i don't think that's actually essential it's probably helpful but it's not essential the whole premise behind all the aerated compost tea is basically is what we're doing we are taking water and adding compost to that water. This compost has microbes in it. It's got fungi, it's got bacteria, it's got protozoa, got all kinds of life in the compost. So you're putting this little bit of life into this water. And you are adding with these bubbles aeration. You're adding oxygen flowing through there so that all of a sudden, all these little microbes have a whole bunch of oxygen and they're just gonna proliferate, go crazy. The last thing that we need for this to work is a source of food for those microbes to eat on. Most people use molasses. As far as the water source you use, you don't wanna use water that is chlorinated. You don't wanna have chlorine in there. If you don't have spring water or well water, just get your bucket and fill it up to however much water you need. Put your air stones in there and let it aerate for 24 hours. That will make the chlorine volatize and get out of there. Just make sure that your water is cleaned out of all the chlorine before you use it for your microbes because that chlorine is going to kill your microbes. Let's go outside and get that compost. I am using some worm compost from our farm. Might look nasty, but man, it's gonna be awesome for those plants. Let me show you a little trick here. Go underneath these trees. Let's go ahead and gather some, let's go ahead and get some of this debris and soil underneath these trees, because actually this stuff is packed with more fungal activity than the worm casting. Worm castings have some fungal activity, but let's go ahead and add some of this. It's gonna be a great, more fungal aspect to the mix. Let's even put some leaves in there. Ooh, this looks good too. Let's get back inside, it's really raining. Let's think about it this way. We are making a soup, making like a soup for our plants and adding all these beneficial microbes, organisms, and then by feeding them and giving them oxygen, they're gonna proliferate, go crazy and be like super happy in the water and then we will spray and pour those materials 
onto our little plants, give them a nice head start. I didn't set that in there. You know what, I just thought of something really cool. It's been raining like crazy, right? Well, old Bessie, our old friend Bessie, was not properly stored away, so look what we have. We have some fresh rain water. Woo! Yeah. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. One thing I forgot to mention is you want to have something to tie the top of this netting. So you're gonna put these stones in here. I like wire because you can just twist it and it <clears throat> cinches down. You got the stones in there. You can either just drop this in, and let it kind of sit down there. I'm okay with that. Honestly, there's no there's no rocket science to it. Or you can get a stick and put it across like this and wrap your wire to that. That's another way to do it. I'll just go ahead and do it that way since I've got the stick here, but really you can just let the sack stay in the bottom of the area if you want to. You grab these, put them at the bottom of the apparatus. Okay, we'll plug this in. There we go. That's all it takes. It's already super brown because we got a lot of good stuff in there. If you really want to get specific with all this, there's charts and stuff online for for more specific information on how much molasses and what kind of feed stock you want to use to have different types of compost, which fungal and bacterial compost to use for different types of plants. There's all kinds of cool information out there, but this is this would be a good way to get you started. I'm actually going to use honey. I'm going to put the honey in there. I don't have molasses, so I'll just put some honey in there. If you want to make more compost tea, then go ahead and get, you know, a big old thing of molasses. Oh yeah, all those little microbes that grow in. You see all the little bubbles coming from the smaller pumps bubbling in there. You can't see them, but all the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, all kinds of life is starting to just go boom in there. Because they have the oxygen they want, they have the moisture they want, and they have the food they want after I put the honey in there. I would say we have ourselves the beginnings of some good plant food. So simple, so easy. Y'all can do it. Just get the materials, get the resources, boom, you're good. The longer you go with the tea, the more fungal it becomes because the bacteria eats up all the juicy honey and then the bacteria dies. Then the fungi comes over, takes over, and eats all the bacteria, and then it's just like a crazy cycle. So there's, there's a whole lot of science to it, but you don't have to get too complicated. Just go ahead and start something. Start small. All this cost me is about $20 to $25. That's all it costs. As soon as this is done, I'll show you what it looks like to go ahead and spread it over your plants. But essentially you can either just pour the compost tea around the base of the plants and that just makes the soil around the plants come alive. Or you can spray onto the surface of the leaves. We want the surface of the leaves to be populated by all these beneficial bacteria. And the first time I saw compost tea work was a friend of mine sprayed it on his plants just sprayed it he didn't put it in the soil he just sprayed it i remember the way the plants looked before and then a few days later i came back and oh my goodness the leaves of these plants were just lush lush and dark green all the the stems were getting thicker and the plants were producing more flowers i mean i'm talking it felt like almost overnight all of a sudden this stuff was working to me this is awesome because it's stewardship it's not taking some kind of synthetic additive and adding it to the soil what we're doing is we're just taking what nature is already doing and fostering it towards abundance stewardship towards abundance let's keep on doing that all right folks get them guys brewing in 24 hours i'll shut this off spray it on my plants make them happy down the road i plan to do some more informational material on compost teas and the different types because there's all kinds of types and, and I want to make this easy for you guys so where you can actually have all you need right there boom put it together and have your garden growing goodness all right bye bye little microbes and fungi catch y'all later been a fun guy <laughs>